Welcome to our first ever youth activist section. I'm here today with Sarah Goody, the founder of Climate Now, and she is, of course, a youth climate activist. Could you tell us something about yourself, Sarah? And of course, thanks for being here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you so much for having me. So my name is Sarah Goody. I'm a 16 year old youth climate activist from San Francisco in the United States. And I'm the founder of Climate Now, which is a youth led organization that works to educate, empower and engage young people in the youth climate movement, primarily through going directly into classrooms and talking with students about what climate change is about why young people are important in this youth climate movement, and then giving them those opportunities opportunities and those resources to go out and to make a meaningful impact in their own community. So as of 2021, we've worked with over 10,000 young people from 70 plus K through 12 schools from around the world, ranging from places like Tanzania and Africa to Milan and Italy. And then back here in my home of the San Francisco Bay Area in the United States. And through this work, we really hope to show young people that their voices are meaningful and that they have something important, unique, uh, and special to add to this conversation around climate change. That, that's incredible. I mean, the, that's the whole thing we're trying to do here um, at Speak Up, Speak Up for Sustainability, um, is improve people's voices to give them, you know, especially in English with it being the, the language of protest, to try and help people get their voices so they, they can speak out. Um, I actually do something similar as well. I recently went to a, a secondary school. It was a village across. I mean, I taught 34 students. So I'm a little bit behind you, but uh, I'm sure I'll achieve 10,000 one day. Um, it might yes. take a while. <laughs> no, it, you know, uh, adds up over time. And I think as long as we're going out there, we're showing students that their voices matter. We're showing them Oh, you know why climate change matters and giving them that education and awareness I think that's what truly matters no matter you know what that number might be. That is brilliant so what first made you climate change aware and how old were you? When I was in sixth grade, so 12 years old, my science teacher presented a unit all about climate change. So in this unit, uh, we spent about a month looking at what climate change is, what carbon emissions are, uh, how our everyday actions are influencing rising carbon emissions. Uh, we looked at some of those impacts of climate change specifically within our own community. So I've grown up in Northern California my whole life and wildfires have been something that are very, very apparent in our own community. I've had friends and family members who've had to evacuate. I recently traveled to my childhood home up in Calistoga, uh, close to where I live about a few months ago, and the, the house was completely burned down. So this is something that, you know, I myself have really uh, grown up with is this constant fear of wildfires of what's happening in our own community. I also have asthma. So each and every you know year as these wildfires are getting worse and worse, our school, you know, it, it's not like we have snow days, we have smoke days where we have to stay home because of these wildfires that are happening just miles uh, from the school that we're attending. And as someone with asthma, I, I've had to be in the emergency room and in the hospital year after year after year, just trying uh, to breathe because the smoke and the air is so bad. So this is something that I've really seen within my own community, not only wildfires, but sea level rise as well. In fact, uh, the old town that I live in is right now trying to build like a levee or a wall uh, to prevent uh, sea level rise continuing in our community and flooding there because it's predicted that you know, in 10, 20 years, that community may be, you know, very close to underwater. So this is something that was really apparent in my own life. I started to really draw those connections, seeing how climate change was impacting me, seeing how it wasn't just an issue of the future, that this was something that people were dealing with in the present day. And I think it was that, you know, mental switch uh, going from something that's, you know, kind of distant, something that's not really relevant to my own life, and then seeing how that was an urgent thing, something that was impacting people like me. And 
when it comes to climate change, this is something that truly impacts everyone, regardless of what they look like, regardless of who they are. Climate change impacts everything we could ever care about uh, and every other social justice issue we could care about from racial justice uh, to animal rights to human rights. So I think it was that culmination of understanding the true scope of what climate change is and of the climate crisis that kind of sent me uh, into a deep dive into the youth climate movement and into taking action. So from there, I did the, the only thing I knew how to do at the time, and that was to educate myself. I was spending all my free time watching documentaries, listening to uh, podcasts, reading books, just trying to get the best understanding I could of this issue. Because I thought, well, even if I'm, you know, not directly taking action right now, or, you know, the one thing that I can do is just understand this myself. And maybe that, you know, heightened sense of understanding will, will help me find my own place in this climate movement. So I was, you know, just trying to get a better sense of what climate change was. That's where I found out more about what activism is. That's where I started to see how I could use my own individual actions to help our planet. I started getting involved in different youth-led organizations, uh, volunteering with nonprofits, trying to see how I could help contribute to their uh, their messages and the work that they were doing. And along that way, I about a year later, I heard about Greta Thunberg and started getting involved in the Fridays for Future strikes when I was at a climate summit in New York. And then I brought that message of climate striking back to my own community where I started striking outside of San Francisco City Hall for over 50 weeks you know, leading up to what is now the pandemic times, I would say. Uh, and in addition to that, a lot of the work that I've done over the past four or five years has been one in education and looking into how I can help uh, other young people better understand this issue because how can we expect someone to go out and take action if they don't even understand what's really happening so in education in policy uh, in my own town I started a climate action committee and I've been working with all of our council members at the town level in trying to uh, adapt new climate uh, resolution and policy worked with other people from around the United States government trying to see how you know global leaders and how our world leaders can really prioritize this issue. I've worked with journalists and work with media companies pitching and producing segments about climate uh, related emergencies and about environmental issues. In 2019, I wrote a piece with Teen Vogue about how climate change activism actually helped my mental health and really dived into that intersection that activism and mental health have there. I've worked on lots of different advisory boards, most recently for Lady Gaga's Born This Way Foundation, uh, and in the past with Cameron Boyce, um, his foundation as well. So just uh, when it comes to climate action, I think there's no real right way to do it. And I've really been a testament to that because my journey has looked like so many different things and I've gotten involved in so many different sectors and so many different parts of this climate movement. But through it all, it's just been super exciting, super um, motivating. And it's also helped me find some sense of hope and optimism when it comes to what's happening with our planet right now. I think you've, you know, again, you've mentioned the whole education side of things. It's it's clearly the most important. I mean, with my daughter, it's something I, we speak about all the time, you know, and some of the concepts are really difficult for very young people to get their head around. Bless you. Um, <laughs> it's really difficult for, for especially very young ch children to get their head around. So um working on that like little by little as you say to try and help her you know find her voice and perhaps find a way to activism if that's what she wants um of course so the next question um i think you've kind of answered my next question a little bit so i'm going to ask you if there's anything that you missed out there and it's what inspired you to become a climate activist so we talked a bit about what first made you aware of it in school, but what was the, the thing that, that really inspired you? You've mentioned a couple of things, but is there anything else? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was seeing those impacts in my own community and really connecting that to my own individual life. It was you know, all of a sudden something that was 
real and something that was really urgent. But other sources of inspiration have really been from other young people getting to see people like Greta Thunberg, getting to see uh, people like Jamie Margolin, who's from here in the United States, like seeing other young people in the public eye doing this incredible work, getting to meet with them, getting to talk with so many youth who are just taking these actions, who are prioritizing our planet and our future. That to me is what, what's been the most inspiring and what's helped me, you know, kind of find my own place. And especially when I was starting to get involved in this work, that's what made me feel like, oh, I, I'm not alone. Oh, I can actually go out there and do this. This isn't just some crazy thought. Other people are doing it. So maybe I can join them too. So I think just getting to see other young people taking these actions, taking these steps, getting to see myself represented uh, in the media and in, in these demonstrations, that's what was kind of the turning point in me actually getting involved and actually deciding to take those actions. I think one of those vital things you said there was seeing other people, like other young people, I, mean, I could go to a thousand schools and I could talk to a, a million students. Um, but my connection with those students, you know, they might see me as a funny clown that dances around with a hat on, um, wow. speaking about climate change. Um, but, it's, it's, you know, it's much more difficult to relate to, to an adult. I mean, I've seen it with, with my daughter. She's a member of the um, Kids Against Plastic Club. And wow. I see her when she's there in the meetings and she's like, glued to the screen listening to everything she comes out of it and she runs over to her and she's like did you know this did you know that it's like, I, don't know, I can stand here and talk to you but as soon as she sees somebody kind of you know more similar to her own age it really kind of sparks her attention so again great work um so the next question um how can we get our students into um so getting into climate change action, how can we get them really engaged? You mentioned a couple of things that the way I started, to be honest, was you know practical tips. I was speaking to someone recently and, and he said that uh, litter picking is like a gateway drug to environmentalism, you know, because it's something you can start young and you can see, you can see the like small impact that you've made. Um, so that was kind of how I saw it, but listening to people like yourself there, there seems to be a, a another wonderful approach as well because that really helps for individual but maybe for the sort of collective action what sort of things can we do i you know i i think that's a great point and there's really two sides of action and two different scopes of action that we can decide to take in that first step it is those individual actions just being constantly aware of how everything we do is impacting the environment of what our carbon footprint looks like so taking those active uh, steps to reduce that carbon footprint if it's anything from deciding to go to thrift stores and deciding uh to switch to a more plant-based diet yeah exactly if it's trying to reduce um the amount of transportation that you're using all of those are really great great starts into the climate movement. And you know, it's really important that we're looking within our own lives and we're taking these individual actions because truly we can't you know, decide what other people do. We can't decide what they say or what actions they take, but we can decide what we do. We can, we have control over that. So being aware of that control and then deciding to do something about it is really, really important. And then the other side of things is kind of group actions, things that you can do with other people. And this is where a lot of young people uh, really get excited because it's an opportunity to connect with others. It's an opportunity to go one step forward. And that's anything from getting involved with an organization like Climate Now. It could be organizing a local beach cleanup or you know a time to pick up plastic in your community with your friends and family and just getting uh, to see everyone coming together for this collective action. It could be uh, getting involved with a research project. It could be uh, planning or joining a climate strike in your own community. All of these are things that you can do with other people, uh, writing to politicians and telling them about your passion for something. I went to my own town and I told them I want to start this climate action committee and I started it. So, you know, taking these things that get other people involved can be really, really meaningful actions and a really great start for young people to get involved. And, you know, when I started to 
get involved in these bigger things. When I started out joining different nonprofit organizations, it was just, it was again, feeling like I was supportive, feeling less lonely, which sometimes those individual actions might feel a little bit like you're on your own, uh, but getting to be with other people, getting to feel like you're having that impact can be just so not only therapeutic, but it, that can just have a, a huge impact, not only on our planet, but on your own life. Wonderful. Now, the next question, I want to know, what are your three, <laughs> three, I'm limiting you to three, uh, <laughs> top tips on reducing our carbon footprint? Now, you could probably give me close to a million, but I'm taking, I'm just taking three. Um, Greta Thunberg recently said in an interview that if she had a magic wand and could have every single person take an action and have them aware of something, she'd have them be, you know, aware of climate change and make sure that each single person on this planet had that basic understanding of what climate change is. So I, I think one really crucial idea and something to take away from this conversation is to start talking with others, to start raising awareness, you know, I, when I'm talking with students, I like to uh, task them with talking to one person each and every single day about climate change. So whether that is texting someone an article that recently came out about climate change, whether that's just talking to them about what you know, asking them questions, just starting to actively have these conversations uh, and, and to make climate change more globally known. I, I like to think what would happen if, you know, instead of seeing reality TV shows, you know, plastered around the news, if we saw climate change plastered around the news and everyone was constantly talking about climate change about these impacts imagine the impact that we could have and imagine if we all had this understanding how we could come together how we could put that pressure on our world leaders to start taking those crucial actions that we need to take uh, to reduce our climate and carbon emissions and just the the kind of societal approach that we'd have to our interactions with our environment. So that that first kind of crucial thing that I recommend is you know, starting those conversations, uh, beginning to spread that awareness with the other people in your own life. And then the next two are kind of more just general ideas and general approaches to activism. And I think that second one is just being really open-minded because when it comes to the climate movement, there's just so many things constantly developing, constantly changing. So being open-minded to new solutions, being open-minded to listening to new perspectives, uh, you know, that's oftentimes where the best solutions or where, you know, the best actions come from is just trying something different, trying something that you never would have anticipated doing. So being open and being, you know, ready to think about the climate crisis in new ways. And then third, I think, um, let's think, it, it's just a general sense of empathy and, and courage when coming into this, uh, a general compassion for our planet. And once you have that compassion, once you have that empathy, then I think everything just follows from there. What I love with, with your tips, um, no, I recently did a tips video and it was all, you know, it was those uh, kind of physical tips, yeah. uh, you know, things, actions that you do. What I love about your tips, they're very much internalized tips. You know, they're very much changes within yourself that you need to make um, or, you know, try to make. Uh, I'm going to pick up on two of them very quickly. The first one that uh, you mentioned about reality TV and stuff like that. What always gets me is when you see two like groups of sports fans really screaming and shouting at each other about how one team's worse than the other team. And you just think, if you've got that passionate about climate change and you've all got that like shouty about climate change, things would change in a second, you know, if they suddenly all decided we're not gonna use single use plastic and just got really angry about that. And then that would stop in an instant. Like, so that passion, if it could be kind of redirected, that was one thing. Um, the open-minded thing is one that I really felt the other day when I was in class and, and I asked the, the, the students, um, is anybody here vegan? Nobody. Is anybody here vegetarian? Not a one. Um, and I said, does everybody in here drink milk? Every single person drank milk. Does everyone eat meat every day? And they all put their hand up. And I said, why not just try, <clears throat> just a suggestion, going one day without meat? I said, why don't you have your lentils without chorizo? 
And there was an audible gasp in the room. People were like, oh, like he just said lentils without chorizo. Like, is, how is that possible? Like, d- d- does that even work? Can you even eat those? And you just think lentils are so versatile. You can make so much with lentils and they're so good. Like, and a yeah. dal will take you 15 minutes to make and you can dip stuff in your dal and you can eat it. It's like, you don't need meat in it every time. But anyway. That was my point about that. And I I got kind of carried away in the moment. Yeah. And I think on that, it's, we talked about this earlier, which was, you know, you don't have to go all or nothing. This is something that you can start to do over time that you can start to implement these smaller things and eventually build up to maybe a a bigger, you know, goal or bigger accomplishment. I know when I first thought about the idea of plant-based, I definitely didn't start all the way and didn't go from eating meat every day to not eating meat at all. I, I, it was a gradual process. And oftentimes people find that so intimidating. And when you bring up this, you know, vegan or vegetarian, it's again, it's that audible gasp. It's like, how, how could you? And I think that really comes from this idea that you, it, you have to go it all the way and you have to be giving something up. And actually when you're making these changes, you're not giving something up, you're gaining something. Uh, so I think just kind of changing the way that we think uh, about those different options and think about our approach to you know, how we change things in our own life can be really crucial. Yeah, I always suggest to, to people with that is, yeah, like take it a step at a time. So maybe start by cutting out beef. Just cut yeah. out beef because beef is like, really not great and cut out milk maybe look for you know a milk alternative i absolutely love oat milk like it's it's brilliant so good (laughs) really really good so yeah that's kind of my advice but i'm not i'm not fully vegan but i don't beat myself up about the fact that a fried egg sandwich is my weakness and i will eat them from time to time with free range eggs that i know the farmer so it's okay (laughs) and and, you know it's it's this analogy that like if you decided today that you were going to run a marathon tomorrow or a marathon in, in in a month, you wouldn't all of a sudden go from not running at all to running, you know, a hundred percent. You'd you'd start to do it gradually over time. So, you know, taking that same approach to these individual actions. Yeah, absolutely right. Is there time for a quick game? Yes, of course. Excellent. Um, so I'd like to play a quick game of word association. Now it's, it's pretty basic. I'll say a word and you say the first word that comes into your head. It doesn't have to be particularly on topic, um, but the first person to stumble or pause too long or repeat uh, is the loser um, or is the learner. Learner. OK, I like that. There's no such like thing that. as losing. It's just a learning opportunity. There you go. Um, so there we go. We can have a winner and a learner. Although we're Great. all learners here. So I'll go first. And I'm going to say, I'm, I'm looking around the room for, for things to say, but there's only one thing that's jumping out and I'm, I'll probably save that for a different program. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, rubbish. Garbage. <laughs> Litter. Streets. Cars. Planes. <laughs> Motorbikes. Fossil fuels. Bad. Good. Yeah, one point to you. <laughs> okay, so if you'd like to come up with a word now. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's warming up. It's not warm enough with the 37 <laughs> degrees coming in through this window at the moment, just so you know. <laughs> definitely, definitely appropriate right now. Here we go. Right. Sharks. Water. Dolphins. Whales. Fish. Octopus. Water. I said water already. Oh, you said it. Oh. One, okay. one. You got it. You got it. Here we go. Should we go for a tiebreaker then? Yep. Okay, let's go for a tiebreaker. Um, I'm going to start with something completely unrelated to the topic, and I'm going to say hat. Clothes. Second hand. Thrift. Reuse. Recycle. Refuse. Reduce. Repair. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. 
come back. He's come back. Um, Ooh, look at that. Whew, that was a really, really good one, that last one as well. That um, was. That was. That was really good. That was, you know, it was you could see that we've warmed <laughs> up there. You could see that we got used to that. Um, and, and now I am going to bid you adieu. I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to say farewell. Um, thanks again for not just for this. Um, not just for everything you've done done for us, what you've done for, for me, but for everything you've done, you are doing for the planet. Thank you for inspiring so many people. Please keep inspiring me. Um, I'll, I'll be following you on every social possible um, <laughs> to, to stay, uh, to keep up. Um, I, yeah, sorry, I'm gonna ask one more question. Um, yeah. You mentioned Lady Gaga earlier. <laughs> um, you kind of glossed over it. It's not often you get involved, you know, with a Oscar winning, multi Grammy winning superstar. Um, so could you just tell us quickly about that, and then we'll say goodbye. Sorry to take more time. It's just I'm. I oh, really oh, all good. Yeah. So I am part of the 2021 uh, advisory board for Lady Gaga's Born This Way Foundation. So the foundation was uh, founded by both Lady Gaga and her mom. So as you know, the, the advisory board, we kind of oversee everything that the foundation does. We provide insight as to what young people are doing and see how we can work together to create a more kind and peaceful world. Uh, so it's, it's been very exciting there getting to work with, you know, not only Lady Gaga and her mom, but working with young people from around the world and getting to see their different experiences and hear what they have to say has been really cool as well. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, you. And I'll see you soon. All right. I will see you soon too. Bye-bye.